So now we go over to here and we see that there's another exception here. Okay. <laughs> now look, I said oxygen's always minus two in, in a compound. Okay, but not in that one and then not in this one right here. So there's an exception. And why is that? It's because really hydrogen peroxide, right, is really made up of hydrogen, which is a plus one, by the way. And if you notice that if hydrogen is plus one, then the oxygen here has to be minus one in order to make minus two total and plus two total for a net charge of zero. That's right. And the reason is because really hydrogen peroxide is made up of hydrogen with the peroxide ion. Peroxide ion is this, O2 with a two negative charge. Looks weird, doesn't it? But here's the thing. There's two O's here. And each one's got to be a negative one. Negative two times one is a two negative charge overall. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. That's a lot of the exceptions taken care of except for one. <laughs> See sodium hydride here? Sodium is always plus, uh, hydrogen is always plus one. But the deal is with this one is that sodium is an element that has a lower electronegativity than hydrogen. When you have a higher electronegativity, you're the one that wants to take the electrons. So you know what? Hydrogen is the one that takes the electrons here from sodium, which wants to lose them. And so that means that hydrogen becomes negative and therefore it gets its negative one charge. And hydrogen can have a negative one charge at times when it's reacting with something that's got a lower electronegativity. Hydrogen's negative one, sodium's plus one. Now what am I saying? Those are really, that one there, that one there, and this one here are really the exceptions that you have to take note of. After that, and don't be intimidated by the exceptions because you're not gonna see them as often. Now, everything's gonna flow. Because when hydrogen is always plus one and oxygen is always minus two, for the most part, things really go nicely. Okay, for instance, MnO, uh, MnO4 with a negative one charge overall, well, the oxygen is minus two. Minus two times four is negative eight, but you've got to keep a negative one here overall, which means the Mn is plus seven. Didn't lose it, did I? Does that make sense to you? Minus two times four. I don't put the total here, right? You're saying, well, there's four, negative two, so I'll just put negative eight here. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Just write down what the individual is because we need to know what the individual is later. That's going to be important. So write down, it's just negative two times four is negative eight, plus a seven makes a negative one. Oxygen is minus two. Minus two times three is negative six. Got to keep a negative one. That's a negative six. What's the nitrogen have to be? Plus five. Make sense? You bet. Okay. CH4, hydrogen is plus one. Plus one times four is positive four, but this carbon better be a negative four because the total is zero here. Yay. Now look at this one. I know, it just gets big and it looks ugly. But, you know, hydrogen is always plus one and oxygen is minus two. My, now, here's the, look at this. Minus two times six is negative 12 and one times 12 is positive 12. So that's already zero and the total is supposed to be zero as a charge. So what is each carbon? And some people say, well, like three of the carbons could be minus two and three of them could be plus two. Like, how would you know? Like, how, how do you know? No, don't, don't, don't go crazy here. All you have to do is just go, well, that's zero. <laughs> because the total is already right there with the hydrogens and oxygens, zero. Okay. Now, you look at this one and you say, oh, I'm intimidated. I'm intimidated. Yeah, you should be. Because oxygen is minus two and minus two times seven is negative 14. But what does that make these guys here? And you see, it's not like you have a hydrogen here and you know what the charge is and then you can, you just got one unknown that you can figure out. Now, this one's a little trickier. But look, that's an ionic compound. And anytime you have ionic compounds made up of cations and anions, metals and nonmetals, what you do is you just break it down into its ions. And you should be able to look up on any periodic table that gives you a polyatomic ion chart and notice that this is really made up of K positive and Cr2O7 with a two negative charge. Do you see that those two chemicals there with those two charges, you need two positive, two Ks, for every one of these to make that compound. That makes sense, doesn't it? Sure it does. So now look, K is positive, so that means plus one because the, uh, it's just a single ion here, so its charge is its oxidation number, so that's plus one. And this is going to be, well, that's minus two. Minus two times seven is negative 14. Got to keep a negative 12. Uh, negative two. <laughs> okay, sorry. Negative seven times negative negative two times seven mm -hmm. is negative fourteen, and you've got to keep a negative two. And you know what that means? That both of these chromiums here have to be plus twelve. 
That means individually they must be plus 6. 6 times 2 is 12, right? Plus 6. Now if you add all that up, negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. Plus 12 is negative 2. Plus 2 is a total of 0. Oh, that's great stuff. Okay, now, what about the C3H8? Last one. Plus 1. Plus 1 times 8 is 8, but that's going to be 0. And I, I, it's, um, uh, yep, it really is. It's negative 8 thirds. What? What? Because that's 8, right? Plus 8. And negative 8 thirds times 3 is negative 24 over 3, which would be equal to negative 8. And negative 8 and positive 8 would give you a total of 0, and that's what it is. You can't have fractions. Yes, you can. I just showed you. So fractions are totally legit. Now, look, that's basically how you ascribe oxidation numbers. What good is that? What does that help you do? Let's go back to the equation now. 